You've probably seen texts like this before. It's Chinese. Taiwanese traditional, to be exact. The first thing that might pop into your head when you see this is that it's very square and regular, where each character almost takes up the same amount of space, including punctuation. This is further exemplified by a popular alternative for the lined paper used in the West. This ruled paper, known as Genko Yoshi in Japan or Yuan Gaoji in Taiwan, places each character into a box, either vertically or horizontally. Now the font I've been using so far is known as Kaiti or Kaishu, which there is technically a difference between those two terms, but that will be explained later on in the video. What's more important at this moment is that this style of Chinese character is only the latest in a long line of different styles throughout history. Because similar to how the Latin script we use today has had various forms over the years, from Egyptian to Phoenician, Greek, Etruscan, and finally Latin, as well as the various forms the Latin script can take, like insular or fractor, so too have Chinese characters undergone much visual change over the centuries. Writing as a tool now has been around for millennia at this point. It's so ubiquitous that it can be a bit surprising to learn that writing has only been invented three to four times throughout history that we currently know of. The second to last of those times was in the Yellow River Basin of modern day northern China. According to legend, Chinese characters were created by a man named Zhang Jie, an official of the Yellow Emperor Huang Di. His job was to record historical events by using a system of colored rope and knots. Dissatisfied with such a system, he set out to find a better method of recording history. So, using his four eyes, he observed the world around him, and understood that everything could be represented with a unique sign. With this knowledge in hand, he began to teach his characters to those around him. However, nobody could fully learn all the characters he created, as there were just way too many of them. Not even Confucius could learn all of them, only managing 70% of the characters Zhang Jie created. Frustrated, Zhang Jie abandoned the remaining 30%, throwing them away and creating all other scripts in the process. In other myths, writing was created by an earlier deity known as Fu Xi, who laid the groundwork for Chinese characters after viewing them on the back of a dragon rising from the Yellow River. Now while the story of Zhang Jie is fairly widespread within China, and quite nice, archaeological accounts differ quite a bit. Our earliest accounts of writing in China come from the Shang era, during the 14th to 11th centuries BCE. There is some evidence of pictographic use in the Yangshao culture of Neolithic China beforehand, but this evidence in the form of carvings and pottery displays qualities of proto-writing and not writing proper. Either way, when we first encounter pieces of proper writing in the Shang era, the script had been fully developed, with most of the features we still associate with the Chinese script today just in a radically different form. During this period, there were two types of character forms used, the bronze script and the oracle bone script. Both forms are named after the medium the characters are written on. The bronze script, or jinwen, translating literally to metal script, was most often used ornamentally, carefully painted on or carved into the molding clay of bronze vessels, mainly but not limited to cups, bells, and cauldrons, leading to another name for the script, Zhongdingwen, or bell and cauldron script. Due to the fact that bronze script characters were often ornamental in function, they retained many pictographic qualities with a higher attention to detail. The oracle bone script, or Jiaguwen, literally shell and bone script, would be carved into turtle shells and the bones of various creatures with a knife, which to me, sounds a bit more metal than the so-called metal script. Compared to their bronze siblings, oracle bone characters were far less pictorial in nature, as they became more angular and non-filled due to being carved with a knife. Also unlike the bronze script, which was shorter phrases or just names, oracle script was more likely to hold lengthy texts. So while a lot of the surviving pieces of oracle bone are related to divinations or oracles, as the Shang had the habit of using bones in the divination process, other matters could be and would be inscribed as well, with some historical texts reaching over a hundred characters long. Aside from bones, shells, pots, and so on, there is some evidence during the late Shang period and the Zhao period that the usage of bamboo scrolls 
had also risen in prominence. However, scrolls don't preserve very well. So part of our evidence is the usage of the word tzu in oracle bone, which represents a bunch of bamboo slips tied together with rope. What does preserve well, though, is bronze. After the fall of the Shang, and the shifting of the Zhao capital from Fenghao in the west to Luoyi in the east, Chinese characters changed mediums from mainly bone to mainly bronze. And while the bronze script of the Oli Zhao followed out of the Shang, being highly ornamental in nature, the latter Zhou periods saw increased linearization of characters, resembling more the forms found on the oracle bone script instead, creating Zhou bronze script. However, during the spring and autumn period of the Eastern Zhao, writing spread downwards towards a larger chunk of the population. Because of the spread of the script to a larger population, when the Warring States period came about, each state began to diversify the form of the characters greatly from one another, as shown by this character across the various states of the period. When the Qin came to power, keeping in practice with a belief in legalism, they enacted a whole host of standardizations across the land. This wide sweep of standardizations included a standardization of the writing systems as well, because while the Qin were slightly more conservative in their character forms in the other states, they still underwent various changes, becoming noticeably more angular and symmetrical. This became the standard which the Qin dynasty pushed, replacing the various other scripts that had been developed, and is called the small seal script in English due to its usage on seals and stamps in the modern day. In Mandarin Chinese, it's called Xiao Zhuanwen. Originally, this script form is attributed to the Qin Emperor's advisor, Li Si. However, it's likely that Li Si compiled together various innovations and simplifications already present to create the new standard we call small script. So far, we've gone over the ancient Chinese scripts, the forms used before a certain man got crucified halfway across the world, as that is how we differentiate the ancient from non-ancient for some strange reason. The first script we encounter after those is the clerical script of the Han Dynasty. The clerical script was markedly different from the small seal script before it. The characters continued to become less pictorial as the characters took on more straight and angular characteristics. There was also a great deal of simplification and diversification of character components. Like for example take the component Le, itself created to the triplication of Tian, meaning field. It's found in the characters Le and Le, meaning tired and lightning. In the clerical script, the extra two fields are deleted, leaving just one. For diversification of character components, we can look at the character component Huo, meaning fire. Despite all being the same component in small script, in clerical script, each character morphed the component to create a more cohesive overall image. Now despite some common beliefs that the seal script became the clerical script during the Qin dynasty, it's more accurate to say that the clerical script developed alongside the small seal script during the Warring States period, before the Qin unified all of China. And while the government officials were using the precursor to as well as seal script, the people would employ so-called Qin popular forms. Seal script still held the highest prestige within Qin, being used in edicts, official declarations, and so on, while the popular forms would be viewed with disdain. The upper class dubbed the popular script Li Shu, Li there meaning a term for slave or one in servitude. However, the popular forms are slowly encroaching on the seal script's domain, as many of the officials who are record keeping were of lower class, and probably learned to use the popular forms instead. Because of its usage by the clerks of the empire, English derived the term clerical script. After the fall of the Qin Empire, seal script had still remained the standard for a period of time but was eventually formally replaced with the clerical script during the Han Dynasty. Now no longer restrained by the seal script, clerical script began to further develop during the Han, gaining the squatter appearance with greater, wavier flourishes that we classify as clerical today. Yet time moves on, and as we have seen time and time again, writing continued to evolve. The elegant swashes and heavy presses of clerical grew burdensome in personal writing, and were eventually left out entirely, leading to the modern Kaishu script. Kaishu was first identified as being used during the late Eastern Han and Three Kingdoms period, before the fourth 
century BCE. However, the script didn't become popular until the Northern and Southern dynasties over 1500 years ago. Now, while the modern script for Chinese characters is the regular script, that doesn't mean that the other style of the scripts were just completely replaced by the regular script everywhere, as the clerical and seal scripts can still be seen here and there for artistic but calligraphic purposes, even if it is only borrowing their style for some modern characters. However, the regular script is what is taught and used most often for writing. Now that I've talked about the major styles of scripts, oracle, bronze, seal, clerical, and regular, those used in official contexts and whatnot, let's move on to some other scripts I haven't mentioned yet, the cursive scripts, that are just as important to the development of Chinese writing as the standards themselves, as the official standards would often adopt from the various cursive practices of the time. We can see this in the transition from seal script to clerical with huo being used as a component. This can also be seen in modern simplified Chinese. Notice the differences of the component meaning silk between simplified, traditional, and the cursive script for the character for paper, or this character meaning C. Ironically, however, both of these came from different cursive scripts. The character for paper derives from the style of cursive script known as Xing Shu, or running script, and is similar to writing in print in English but connecting many of the characters due to not fully lifting one's pen. The character for C comes from another style called Zhao Shu, or grass script as it's known in English, and it's better thought of as a separate script entirely on equal ground with the regular script, as the form of the characters in grass script can be remarkably different from that of either due in part to grass script deriving from early clerical and developing alongside it as time went on. And there you have it, the various forms of the Chinese script over the years. Now obviously there are some scripts I haven't mentioned, but I've covered the main ones so far. However, that's just the forms that Chinese characters have taken over the years. I've yet to mention how they actually work, or how they spread beyond the borders of ancient China and how we've managed to basically brute force them into working with computers. However, those topics are for a later time, and if you don't want to miss them, consider subscribing to my channel, or my Patreon.